Divi Cloud by Rapid7 helps you achieve continuous security and compliance and fully realize the benefits of cloud and container technology. Over the next 15 minutes, we will provide a brief introduction to Divi Cloud, a 10 minute demo to show you the art of the possible, and last but certainly not least, hear from our longtime customer Discovery about how they use Divi Cloud to accelerate innovation through the use of public cloud without the loss of control. Adoption of Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and Kubernetes is intense and rapid. Driven by enterprises of all sizes, embracing these environments as the default starting point for new projects and the next step for updates and enhancements to existing applications. By enabling unprecedented speed and agility, cloud and container technology can help innovation efforts take off. This speed and agility is created in part by providing developers and engineers self-service access to these environments. Left uncontrolled, these environments inevitably drift into unmanageable complexity. This makes security, governance, risk, and compliance difficult, if not impossible. The sheer size and complexity of these environments and the speed of workload deployment is forcing security professionals to embrace automation or face the inevitability of a data breach or other security incident. Enterprise organizations that want to manage this complexity and close the security achievement gap can do so with Divi Cloud. Divi Cloud protects cloud and container environments from misconfigurations, policy violations, threats, and identity and access management challenges. With automated prevention and real time remediation of risk, Divi Cloud customers achieve continuous security and compliance. With hundreds of out of the box policies aligned with industry and regulatory standards, Divi Cloud provides immediate impact and value. Importantly, Divi Cloud is also highly configurable. From custom policies to a robust API, Divi Cloud can adapt to any organization's unique business needs. Customers also love and trust Divi Cloud, not just because of the quality and effectiveness of our product, but because of our laser focus on delivering value and great experiences to our customers. Now stay tuned for a demonstration of how Divi Cloud can help you achieve continuous security and compliance. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the Divi Cloud platform. Now, Divi Cloud is a security tool that's completely focused on giving you better security, visibility, and compliance into your public cloud infrastructure. Uh, but one of the things to note uh, initially is how this is deployed, because while we host this for a handful of our customers, the majority actually have this running with inside their walls. And the reason that we did this is really threefold. First, we never have access to any of your data. You know, all of this infrastructure configuration information we're pulling from these environments always stays with you. Second is that we've had a focus on automated remediation from day one. And in order to make changes in your environment, we'd need a whole lot of right access and we don't want those permissions. And so again, those stay with you. And then last is that we can provide a much more extensible platform. Uh, our backend is all uh, plugin based and written in Python. And so if we need to extend this further and write custom integrations for other data sources or actions or anything like that, by having this live in a single tenant sort of fashion means that you get a Divi Cloud installation that is completely yours to do with as you wish. So for all these different clouds that we support, Amazon, Azure, Google, Ollie Cloud, and Kubernetes, we're hooking into all of these agentlessly. So uh, cross account roles for Amazon, service accounts for Google, and so on and so forth. And when we hook into these different environments, uh, the first and most basic thing that we're doing is just taking data from all these different accounts and bringing them into one spot. And so that one spot that we bring them into is our resources page, which is just our name for the central inventory. The way that we treat these resources though across the multi-cloud is a little unique though, because what we did is we saw that there was a massive amount of overlap between these different providers. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, Amazon EC2 versus Azure VMs, they're basically the same service. And so we said, okay, well, if that's the case, then let's call these cloud servers instances. Instead of RDS versus SQL Server versus Cloud SQL, we said, okay, well, let's just call them databases. And we did this for all the services that made sense to bring together across these providers. And by doing this, what you get first is from an inventory standpoint, I can now see all of my relational databases, not just across a region, but actually across cloud as well. And second, and probably more importantly, is that when we bring these names together, uh, when these services come into the DB Cloud platform, 
we don't just normalize the name, but actually the properties as well. So that means by the time you see these properties here, encrypted means encrypted, public means public, and, and so on and so forth across these different services. And so with that, now if I write a rule, for example, that says if my databases should be encrypted and should not be public, I can write that rule once and have it work across all of these different clouds. I don't need to maintain a separate standard for Amazon, for Azure, for Google, and so on and so forth. And if you're a multi-cloud company, this obviously can help right out of the box, but it can also help future-proof your environment if you end up becoming a multi-cloud company, uh, even unintentionally through like a merger or an acquisition. So with this though, the inventory piece is nice to get that central view, but it's not really where you'd spend more of your time. Instead, we want to do more of defining good versus bad in our environment. And so for that, we come over to insights, which is just our name for checks. And so within insights, we ship with just over 400 out of the box. And then you can create as many custom ones beyond this as you need to get the rest of that coverage for those things that we just can't pre-can. You know, those tagging policies and approved regions and images that you should be running and all of that are things you'll need to, to do custom uh, using our filters to get the rest of the way there because we just can't prepackage it. But pre-canned or custom, all of the content lives here, but in this environment, I've got over 500 checks and that's a lot. And I want some view that's more focused and more tailored to my environment. And so for that, you end up with packs. Packs are collections of rules and the collections of rules that we map are made for particular compliance frameworks. You know, show me how I'm doing against NIST or HIPAA or CIS or anything like that. And the thing is, is that just like you'll inevitably create custom insights, you'll create custom packs as well, because this is great content, but it's not perfect because again, every environment's a little bit different. And so what you'll end up doing is instead end up with custom packs, which can either be clones of the pre-canned content that have then been tweaked to be more relevant to your environment, or they can be um, completely built from scratch that have nothing to do with compliance. You know, maybe we want to do some like cost management as it relates to housekeeping, or I just want a best practices check of just things people should be doing, period. Uh, either way, again, packs are just collections of rules, so we can bring these together however I want. Now, with this though, let's say I've gone through and this pack is perfect for me. Uh, every check is good, I've removed the stuff I don't care about, this kind of gets you to step zero because within this, we've got colors here and numbers that show us good versus bad, but we want something that scales better. And so from here, there's really two different directions you would go to get more of this value on a, a daily basis. And, and again, something that scales better. The first is over to our compliance scorecard. Our compliance scorecard is essentially just a heat map of how we are doing against a particular pack and against a particular combination of environments, whether that's my full view or just my dev accounts or just prod or anything like that. But with this, what I have now is I have got my different accounts as my rows and my checks as my columns. And as you might imagine, red is bad and green is good. Um, but the thing is, is that again, we want to get more information out of this and we want it in a way that doesn't just sign us up to be in the UI. And so normally what you'd probably do is set this up to send you a report every like day or week, but you can also do a browser download here so that we can get this information on demand. And now I have this in an Excel file, which is formatted just the way that we saw before, but uh, now tweaked for Excel. But you'll also have the full list of all of the different resources that had issues. Um, and, you know, what the names are, what the problems are that we found, and the links to be able to dive in um, to that finding within Divi Cloud. And additionally, if you've added any exemptions for things that, you know, might be out of compliance, but we've called good for some reason, we'll show you those here too, because those things that we're intentionally ignoring are also very important to make sure that we stay aware of. So that's kind of that higher level reporting. You know, this is probably the thing that I would take and send off to my manager. But the other piece is, what about the people who are actually doing the fixing? Those people probably want less Excel reports and want more instead um, actionable information. And so for that, 
We come back to our insights, but instead what we do is we click on this wrench to create a bot. And bots, you can think of like the then that of an if this, then that statement. And so when, you know, for example, a bucket is exposed to the world, what do I want to do? And I can create multiple bots off a single insight if or when it makes sense, because I most often don't want to do the same thing in dev as I do in prod. And so we can go and we can scope these environments down however we need. Badges are essentially just tags at the account level that help us group together these different environments. And so let's say next. Conditions here pre-populate from the insight that I came from, so there's nothing I need to do on this. And now here at the core of the bot is where we actually define what do I want to do. And so for that, we should always start with notifications. Someone needs to know about this. It needs to be logged somewhere. And so here are productized integrations. And then this is in addition to your more generic targets, like your syslogs and webhooks and emails and things like that. Um, but between these different mechanisms, even if the place you're trying to get the data is not on this list, it's still going to be pretty easy to get it there. And so from here, we just stack actions. So first, maybe I just want to send an email off. And I can go and put my text in here. We support Jinja 2, which is essentially a way for us to use dynamic variables in these notifications. So we're not sending off just static issues that then require you to dig in further to figure out what's going on. But we add in our text here. And if I want to then add more notifications, I just keep layering on actions. Maybe I want to send an email and fire off an event to Splunk. Or if I want to take some of that remediation that I was talking about earlier, I can do that here too. And so, you know, maybe just on specific environments or certain buckets, if these are exposed, we can't have this. And so I'll send a notification off letting someone know, but then I'm actually going to go and quarantine this bucket so that I can make sure that we don't end up in the news because of misconfigured uh, permissions. So notification or read write, Either way, we layer those together here to have the combination of events I'm looking for. And then the last thing I do is just say when you want this to run, which is almost always going to be a resource that's new or one that was existing but now has been changed to be out of compliance are usually the two times I would want a bot to fire. So that's really the core of JV Cloud. We take this information, we centralize it from all your different environments, and then we define good or bad using those insights. And then from there, we either go more higher level for reporting or a more lower level for notification and or break fix. So with that, uh, thank you for your time. Um, as usual, uh, please let us know if you have any questions. And uh, now uh, to hear from one of our customers on how they're using Divi Cloud. I'm Dave Duvall. I'm EVP and Global Head of IT at Discovery. Discovery uh, has the, the largest distribution of any, any entertainment brand on the planet. My team and our mission is to really support enterprise shared services, providing cloud platforms, data center platforms, IT customer service, business systems. So cloud at Discovery is a core part of how we're evolving the company into more agile and customer aligned products. We're in all three major clouds, so we, we have active presence in AWS, Google, as well as Azure. One of the big things we have to do is we have to assure the risk and compliance of the overall enterprise. Divi Cloud gives us the ability to automate governance, offer flexibility, allow better insight and tighter controls and enhance compliance all at the same time. When I think about all the automation we can do, you know, it can span a whole breadth of, of types of enforcement. It's a very flexible toolbox uh, that we can dip into. Divi Cloud plays a key role for us in rapid and vast consumption of new resources all over the planet. So we think we, we might be in positions to adopt whole new architectures quite quickly, either through acquisition or through new build. And the fact that we have that confidence that Divi Cloud will be there to support, you know, new resource types, new cloud partners, new platforms uh, rapidly and, and at scale is, is key to having that assurance that, that I can continue to govern this platform as it grows. Divi Cloud has been a big part of our environment for several years now, and so having a platform like Divi Cloud that can give an InfoSec professional in my team a good bit of information if there's, say, a fresh vulnerability in the platform or concern or a design pattern they want to go uh, step into, just having that uh, inventory and visibility to go focus efforts and even know our situational awareness 
of how much we're exposed to a particular problematic service. That's hugely valuable. We love that the data is open and exportable as well. We can access it programmatically where we need to. We can provide simple dashboards and UIs where we need to, depending on the, the sophistication of the customer or the audience that we're, that we're presenting the information to. Lastly, when I think about all the automation we can do, you know, it can span a whole breadth of, of types of enforcement. You know, we've got things related to um, security baselines, to identity checks, to uh, resource consumption checks. Uh, if we want to forbid the usage of a certain type of AWS resource, for example, we can we can do that. You know, if we've just chosen to say we don't trust service X, Y, or Z, uh, we can we can prevent that. The support, the partnership around upgrades and deployments of the platform itself, the support we get from the team, all the support models, Slack channels, and other ways to collaborate and make sure that we're getting uh, the information we need, and the fact that we get listened to. You know, I think the team can say, hey, it'd be great if we had a bot that did X or Y, and, and have that listened to and incorporated in the roadmap is, is powerful. What's great about working with Divi Cloud is they understand enterprise customers, they innovate quickly, and they ship features fast. And finally, Divi Cloud is great to work with. They listen to their customers and they care about our success.